Today's fellow Fasting Foodie friend has been fasting for almost three years. His typical schedule is 18-6, and with that, he's been able to lose about 50 pounds. Our guest is 36 years old, a YouTuber, an online coach, and has previously served in the Army. Today's guest is Ryan Johnson. Welcome, Ryan. Hey, thank you very much, Jackie. Thanks for having me on. I'm super excited to, to talk with you today. I know everyone's going to be excited that you're on here because who doesn't love or know Ryan? <laughs> I would say a lot of overlap for sure. Yeah. And I think it's really awesome that I'm almost 36, not quite yet, but um, we're both parents, both stay at home role with the kids, fasting, very similar. And I'm very excited to talk to someone that very similar approaches. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think we even got like started around the same time too. Yeah, I, we if did. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So first question, are you fasting or are you in your eating window right now? I am fasting right now. Um, I actually ate a little later last night than I typically do. So I ended up eating at uh, 10 o'clock. It was a late night. So I'm at coming up on, what's that, 14 hours right now. Okay. Um, but my plan is to do around 20 today. Um, I'll do one My I'll do one meal today. Is it an amazing one meal? Will we see it on YouTube? I, it, it is a filming day. So I'm, I'm going <laughs> to go out and do, do OMAD somewhere. <laughs> I try not to be too rigid in what I plan on eating because um, mm -hmm. sometimes that can be stressful to me. So sometimes I let what am I in the mood for? So yeah. I'll wait until we get a little closer and we're like, what am I feeling today? I love that. That's actually one of the hardest things for me with being like mom rule and meal planning is I have to think of everyone else and it would be much easier if I could just think of only myself because my OMAD, I want it to be perfect. <laughs> exactly. I don't want spaghetti and meatballs again, you know? My kids love it, but I'm over it. That's when I do an e early eating window. <laughs> I think you're pretty fluid in your eating windows. Can you kind of describe that and how you approach your day-to-day? -day? Yeah, so I think one of the things that I look at, um, you know, it's been an evolution, so I've been doing it for three years now. Um, I initially got started, like a lot of people, to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And I think when I initially started my eating window, probably for the first, um, I'd have to go back and look at my videos, but honestly, probably for the first six months, I was doing between 16 and 18 hours. I wasn't doing a lot of one meal a day um, because I was using it as a way to help me make sure and manage my calories were good. Because I was bigger, I was able to eat more calories and I was doing like 16 to 18 hours um just in order to make sure that I was hitting my deficit. Now that I'm kind of getting closer to my goal weight, I still keep a deficit in mind. But one of the things that I do now that is different before, um, now that I'm doing YouTube and online coaching full time, I'm able to train more now. So now I'm working okay. out three to four days a week, whereas before I was working out honestly like one to two days a week. So I will plan my eating windows kind of like around my training a little bit. So on days where I have you know, a big workout, I'm going to do 16 to 18 hours so that I can fit more food in. Um, and then on days where I'm not training as hard. So I did a workout this morning, but it wasn't a really tough one. It was really super light. So I'll do OMAD on a day like today. And, and that's one of the things that I use now to kind of dictate what my fasting schedule looks like is which days am I lifting just so that I can eat a little more fuel kind of the workouts. Well, I'm excited to pick your brain on something because I'm not an extreme workout. I walk. That's like my exercise of choice. Um, and I love it. That's what I do. And occasionally I sprinkle minor things in, but I get asked a lot working out while fasting. Do you have a preference and do you find that one's better than the other? So I love this question. I get it a lot. And the mm -hmm. reason like, I get excited to answer it is there's two answers. There's like the answer that everybody is searching for, but it's not really the answer they need. The answer that everyone is searching for is what is the best time to work out when you're fasted? When are you going to get the best results? When is it optimal to work out? And I can appreciate that. And I think that is kind of one of the traps that we fall into is we're looking for the best time to work out. I yeah. work out fasted, but I don't do that because it's optimal or it's best. I do it because that's when it fits into my schedule. And at the end of the day, work out when you can work out consistently. If that happens to be fasted, that's great. If it happens to be in your eating window, because that's when you have time allotted, then do that. Whatever you can do consistently, you're going to get much better results than trying to 
if you don't have time in the morning, but you try to fit it in because you think it's best, but then you end up not doing it because it didn't make sense with your schedule. So there are benefits to working out fasted, but at the end of the day, I say work out when it fits best into your schedule. Right. Don't just say screw it. If it if it's not optimal, who's going to keep up with only doing perfect time? I totally agree. Exactly. When I first started, I had a friend that was very worried about me. Like, how are you going to have the energy to work out? And I was like, well, first of all, I don't really work out that often. But second, I think people just feel like we're in this um, deprived energy state. But I don't find that at all. I actually would prefer not because it's optimal, but because I feel best when I'm fasting. I feel like it gives me a lot of energy. Do you find that you are energized to work out? And I know you do more intense workouts than walking, but do you find that you have any energy deficits when you work out when it's in your fasted state? I really don't. I think one of the things that I like to point out as an example, like when I started fasting, I was running a route was my job. So it was a very physical job. Kind of every day I was getting in probably 12 to 17,000 steps on some days. Uh And I preferred to do that fasted because I felt like as soon as I eat something, I want to slow down. Like I definitely get (laughs) lethargic after I eat. And now I'm getting better at, I am focused more on nutrition. So like, I know, okay, if I eat something light, low in carbs, I'm not necessarily going to be as lethargic. Um, But I have not experienced energy deficits while fasted. Some of the things that I have noticed is on a day before a lift. So like if I'm going to lift heavy today, then yesterday I would have eaten more carbs with my dinner meal because I can tell the difference then if I have had carbs the day prior, but working out fasted, it's like, no, the fat that I'm losing is what's fueling the workout. Right. Awesome. And I, that's, I find the same thing, but I'm not super experienced in the workout to be an authority on it. (laughs) I'm going to take a break to mention my sponsor Element for this video. I have Element on a near daily basis. I love to have the flavors in my eating window. I often add them to a sparkling water like this. It is refreshing. It's delicious. It's like a mocktail. And on my full fast, I choose to have the raw unflavored and I will mix that either in plain sparkling water, iced tea, or my personal favorite iced coffee. Raw unflavored element, just like the flavors, has 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium. There's no carbs, no sugars, no fillers, just a science-backed formula for electrolytes. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single-serve packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or to share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash fastingfoodie. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash fastingfoodie. Um, so within your eating window, do you have favorite things to open your eating window with? This is kind of like a habitual thing that I have learned over time, um, just through practice and trial and error. In everything I do, I like to follow a 70-30 or an 80-20 rule, right? Like Mm -hmm. 80% of the time I try to do good, 20% of the time I'll allow myself to enjoy myself, show show myself some grace. But one of the things that I have learned is if I open my eating window with something that is on the lighter side, so one to 300 calories, higher in protein, so whether that be bone broth or lean meat, something like that, if I break my fast with that, For the rest of that eating window, especially on days where I'm doing like 16 hours fasted, where I you can eat a lot in eight hours if you Mm -hmm. really try, but on days where I'm conscious about oh exactly, it's like I'm I'm going to do eight hour eating window, but that doesn't it's not a free for all. (laughs) But on days where I break Mm -hmm. my fast with one to 300 calories and it's high in protein, I tend to make better decisions throughout my eating window. So it's kind of like you start on a good note, you end on a good note. If I start with potato chips, not that potato chips are inherently wrong, Mm -hmm. but mentally and habitually, it's like, well, I've had the potato chip and I might as well have something else, have something else. So it's more that kind of thing. I do it as a start good, finish good kind of mentality thing. I have found the same thing. And it wasn't something I could even 
think of at the beginning. I would have so many people say, you need to open your eating with protein. And you know, every, every commenter out there has different ideas, but I couldn't, I wasn't mentally able to do anything other than just learn to fast at first. And I wholeheartedly see a difference. I do try to break my fast with protein. I, I'm not a huge meat eater. Um, we eat way less meat than you, you do, but I really like to do like pistachios and, uh, pepitas, cottage cheese. And I just find that I feel better. And it's so much easier for me to choose to feel better than to say, I can't do the potato chips because are there days I'm going to open with potato chips because I'm at my daughter's basketball game? There very well could be, but knowing that I feel better and that my fast is going to make me feel better, it's easier to make that choice. But I'm definitely in agreement. Every day doesn't have to be, you know, protein only because chips have a place in my diet. (laughs) No, and a hundred percent. So like you just talked about there, like you, when you choose, there is healthy food and there's food that's not as healthy, but when you choose the healthy food, because it's what you want to eat, then that means you're going to keep doing it and keep doing it. And by doing it for the rest of our lives, that's how we kind of stay healthy forever. It's not, I'm eating the healthy thing because I have to, because eventually that wears on you. Yep. And that's actually going back to, um, exercise for me, anytime I make myself work out, it feels extremely punitive, except for walking. I could walk for seven miles because I enjoy it. I feel good. It makes me feel better. And I know that there's a physical benefit, but it's not to work out. It's because I enjoy it. And I think that there are so many ways that you can approach fasting, exercising, and find the joy in it. And it's easier to choose the joyful decisions and make changes. 100%. I wish I could be a CrossFitter, but... I'm not there yet. <laughs> so, so what I did, so I committed, I'm coming up on finishing up two months of it now. I committed to three months and I'm, I can tell myself starting to reach the curve. Mm-hmm. So when I was in the army, I used to run a lot. When I was in college, I trained for a half marathon. And for that, we ran all the time and I hated running until I started to get good at it. And then I, lo- then it was okay. fun. So CrossFit's kind of the same way. I was like, I was like, I'm going to do it for three months because in that period of time, I will get a little better. So then I'll be able to decide whether or not I like it. Cause I definitely like, I, I knew that the first workouts were not going to be enjoyable, but now it's getting to the point where it's like, okay, I'm starting to get some momentum now. So it's starting to get fun. Just how fasting is too, isn't it? Like, and I, this is what I always tell new fasters. It's awful at the beginning for most people. It's a major life shift. But if you keep going, you're going to get to where it's not awful every day. It's going to be your new second nature. So so I know sometimes because I watch your channel, you do the OMAD and then you mentioned the 18.6. How do you decide if it's an OMAD day? Is it just based on how you're feeling? Are you really fluid? I'm pretty fluid um, and Part of it is because I do have the YouTube channel now and I think I want to show, you know, I'll pick days that I film. I used to film every day. Like my first year on YouTube, I was filming like seven days a week. (laughs) I used to do what I eat in a week videos and those took forever because I had to film every little thing. Now I try to film like four, sometimes five days a week. And so part of my decision goes into that whole, what my workouts are. So on a day where I'm not working out as hard, okay, that makes, that means it's a day that I can do OMAD. And then it's like, okay, am I going to be able to film today? So that's part of it. If, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, that mix would, instead of saying filming, it would be, what foods do I want to enjoy this week? And I would use OMAD to be those foods that I really enjoy. If it's going out to eat with my family, or if we Mm -hmm. got a special event, I would just plan if I'm going to have three OMAD days throughout the week so that I can remain in a calorie deficit, meaning eat for my OMAD days, I eat between 16 to 2200 calories, which is still a deficit to me, but that's a lot in one meal. Mm -hmm. I would plan that around whether it be special events or just food that I kind of want to eat. And also not on a day that I'm lifting. I'm not regimented. If you were to look back over my calendar, they're kind of here and there. Sometimes they're two days in a row. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Some people think I only do one meal a day because they're like, <laughs> you're the one meal a day video guy. I was like, no, that, those videos just get more views, but yeah. <laughs> I don't just do one meal a day. I think it's really great for people to hear about the fluid options because when you first are presented with intermittent fasting, it seems really restrictive, right? Like you, you fast and you only eat in a shorter window, but I, that's why I share. And that's what made me start sharing is I couldn't believe how open and 
flexible it was and how much I could fit my joy of food in a smaller window. And I think it's great that you approach it day by day, what's going on, you get to prioritize what's going on in life and then fit the food to match that. And I think that's how I approach it as well. And I think that really lends itself to a lifelong journey instead of something that you're stuck to. A hundred percent. It's so, it's so cliche for, you know, people to say, learn to love the process and the destination will take care, take care of itself. It's like, well, that sounds nice. And it's like, well, how do, how do you actually do that? And you do that by being flexible. And if what you're doing is really hard, then take a step back and see how can I make it a little more enjoyable? Because if you can do something that's not as optimal, more enjoyable, but you can do it forever, you'll be unstoppable. Yep. And um, one, I will get comments because I do mainly OMAD almost exclusively, but people will message me on Instagram. I can't do OMAD. It's awful. And I say, well, there's so many ways to fast. I can't do an eight hour eating window because I will overindulge for eight hours. I, I am not the type of person that can spread out the calories. I, I mean, I could, but I find enjoyment in the OMAD. So it's a matter of finding your, your journey. And the process is trial and error largely a hundred percent. And so I, I get that comment a lot too. And that's one of the reasons that I'm doing OMAD three days out of the week. And like some of my OMAD days will be 22, 2400 calories. And they're like, well, why don't you just eat that over the course of the day? I have done that before. Like I've done six meals a day, measured out my macros and I got great results. And I kept those results for like two weeks, but I was always hungry. I was always hungry. All I ever thought about was food because I would eat something. Well, that didn't satiate me. What am I going to eat next? And then my whole day is occupied with thinking about food. Whereas now I'm not going to think about food till four o'clock and then I'm going to eat. <laughs> yep. And even, even when I have days, like I'm looking forward to my eating window. Unfortunately, today's not one of those for me. It's a busy mom day, but it's not obsessive. It's like, oh, cool. I have that to look forward to. And it's incentive to get there. Um, but it's not oh, I should have not had the two handfuls of potato chips and constantly critiquing or wishing I had done differently. The, the narrative isn't there all day long. So do you have any favorite window closers or practices to close your eating window? So I would say I, I kind of do two things that have helped me. So I did struggle with late night snacking when I started. Um, and there was a few shifts that I have made that kind of help with that. One is... If I am craving something sweet, protein shakes have helped. If I'm eating a little earlier in the day, say we have dinner at six, I'll have a, a really thick protein shake um, after dinner and that will hold me over. The other thing that we'll do is we do dinner a little later. So we're doing dinner kind of between seven and eight. I try to go to bed usually between like nine thirty and 10. And I have found that helps me because I'm going to bed with a full stomach. And that okay. makes, that kind of cuts out kind of that late night kind of cravings. Um, as far as window closers, that's kind of, that's what I do consistently is I do eat a later dinner, um, seven to mm -hmm. eight. And then one of the things that I am aware of, and it just is what it is. If a day that I'm having sweets like from having cheesecake or ice cream, or if I have a high carb day, I know that next day is not going to be OMAD because I'm going to be hungry. Okay, <laughs> like that, that next day, that next day is going to be 16 hours. Like, it's going to be harder to push it out. That's interesting. And I, I, um, I haven't really paid attention to if I have that issue. I have been wearing a continuous glucose monitor and I really have very little that affects me extremely if I eat it after I eat a meal. So I can eat the sweets and I don't have extreme mm. swings. If I do it at the beginning, I have, which is probably why I found that I feel so much better not opening. Like I used to love iced coffee at the beginning of my window. Like I wasn't really eating, but I'd open my window with an iced coffee. Well, then I wanted to snack the entire time. And I think my blood glucose spike is if I don't have anything else to help. But it's interesting that mm -hmm. you see that the next day. I'm going to have to start paying attention to see if I have that too. Yeah. Like on days, that's what I tell people like that I'll work with is like, Hey, I'm really struggling to hit my fast today. My question is always, well, what did we eat yesterday? Cause sometimes what we ate yesterday is affecting kind of our hunger today. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention to that for myself. Thank you for sharing that. I know you're three years in now. So when you take yourself back to the beginning, did you shock people in your life by starting this and have naysayers, negative comments, or did you kind of keep it to yourself? How was the beginning with others in your life? So I would say um, Carrie was really supportive because 
um, I have done yo-yo diets like my whole life. Like I've gained and lost the same 40 to 60 pounds more times than I can count. And I think because of the way that our life was situated, we both work, the girls are at school, missing breakfast with the family. We didn't see too much Mm -hmm. because we're all like, I'm feeding the girls breakfast as we're going out to school and Carrie's a nurse. So she's gone like early in the mornings. So we didn't miss breakfast. Um, where it got tougher at the beginning and we've gotten better now is like if we'll do vacations and special events, I used to eat breakfast because I didn't want to be, you know, I wanted to be accommodating and didn't want, but now everyone in my life has become more supportive of that to where even if we're going on vacation, I will choose, even if we're going to like Flapjack house on in Gallenberg, right? There's mm-hmm. Flapjack houses everywhere in Gallenberg. I'll just have a cup of coffee with breakfast and it's not that I don't want to enjoy the time together because we still get to enjoy that time together, but I'm going to have a better day. I'm going to feel better. I'm going to be more energized to actually enjoy the vacation if I just have coffee with breakfast. So it's, it's gotten better on stuff like that. Do you think your kids have at this point, I'm assuming it's second nature to them, but was there any adjustment? Like, why isn't dad eating? People ask me that often. Like, how do your kids react to this? I don't think they have thought too much. I mean, now they know, now they know, like, you know, daddy's Mm -hmm. fasting. And I think one of the things, a question that I get a lot is, do I do any extended fasting? And in my three years, I have never done more than like 33 hours. I think I did 33 or 36 hours, maybe three times over the course of three years. And one of the reasons that I have done that is I try to be conscious of modeling for my girls and while I know there are a lot of health benefits associated with extended fasting, I would love to give it a try. I would love to do like a f- three, four, five day fast, see how I feel. Mm-hmm. Carrie and I need to plan that on a time where she's got the girls and they're going on like a mini vacation. So one of the <laughs> things that I don't want to see, so my girls are five and eight right now. I don't want them to see me not eating for three to four days and associate that with losing weight. Now, I know that there's health benefits associated with it. So it's like, I'm not, I would never advise you do extended fasting for the purpose of losing weight because that can be like a cycle that you get into. There are health benefits. So that's one of the things that I haven't done. So Mm -hmm. is I haven't done extended fasting because I don't want them to associate not eating with losing weight. As silly as it sounds like with fasting, like skipping breakfast, but they see me for lunch and dinner, they see me eat like regular foods. And that's kind of what I want to model is like, there are no bad foods, that kind of stuff. Yep. That's, and that's always what my answer to people is. My kids see me enjoying food. They see me enjoying slushies on occasion. They see me enjoying going out to restaurants and picking food and delighting in it. And I think that it's okay for them to see me choosing not to eat as well. And I also ask, you know, no one ever had any issue with me doing Weight Watchers over and over and over again. And Anytime I did that, I was worried about what that was modeling for my, at the time, my daughters, my son was too young to even care, but my girls, I would eat different dinners than them and I would count points and every recipe was like meticulously went over. And I feel like overall, they're going to understand that I'm just choosing when to eat. I'm not obsessing about the food. And I think it models much better than dieting does. I, and that's certainly something I never wanted to pass on to my girls. Because like you, I did the same yo-yo over and over again. So did you have any early memory going back about three years where you you had like, wow, I can do this long term. This is different than dieting. Was there a meal or an event where you thought that was pretty cool? Or Yeah. So there's actually, there's two that I can think of vividly is one, the decision why to do fasting. Um, because I had done yo-yos before, I had actually dabbled in fasting. I did it on one of my deployments. I lost like 20 pounds. And at the time, if anybody's watching this that have ever served before, you know that deployments sometimes are a time for you to kind of dial in your fitness and nutrition because you got <laughs> nothing else to do sometimes. So it's like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna come back from this. I'm going to have my six pack. Like, I'm going to look good. So I did intermittent <laughs> fasting there to like really get in really, really good shape. But then I got back and I stopped doing it because I did it then only to like have my six pack and then I stopped. Yeah. <laughs> so I never did it. But then of every ever, when it came time to choose a diet, because I, I had done Weight Watchers, I had done calorie counting, I had done bodybuilding six meals a day. When I looked back at all of the things that I have ever done before, when I thought about it, I was like, well, intermittent fasting that I did that time, 
that seemed pretty easy. I could, I could probably do that. So then I made the choice to do intermittent fasting at the start of COVID at 2020 when I was at 270 pounds. And then the kind of switch that flipped for me was not just the fasting, but it was the dealing with my relationship with food and having good foods and bad foods. Mm -hmm. I was like three weeks in and I was uh, working a stressful job. Part of the reason that I had put on all the weight and at the jo my job at that time, I was traveling around, which means I could eat anywhere. And I ate out all the yeah. time. I was passing a Whataburger and I was like, because at this point I had done three weeks of eating intermittent fasting and eating like healthy because I wanted to lose the weight all right yeah. away. I was like, oh man, I really want Whataburger. And then I sat in the parking lot. I was like, you know what? I'm going to have Whataburger. I'm going to have it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to get a double water burger, a large fry, a milkshake. It was like noon at the time. I was like, I'm just going to have this. And then I'm just going to start and do like an 18 or a 20 hour fast until 10 or 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. And I did that and I enjoyed it. And I didn't allow myself to feel like I had gone off plane. And that was kind of where my whole thing started of like, I try to eat normal foods. I'm trying to clean it up, obviously, but yeah. it's like, I'm not going to let this, I'm not going to let the guilt of food do more damage than the calories themselves. Yes. That's my, I had a very similar experience, which is what made me ask because when I was, my husband got a promotion and he wanted to go to Carabas. He is 100% like chain restaurant. He knows what he's going to get. That's his favorite. So, and normally I would not eat the bread and I'd stress about what entree I'd get. And I would just try to build a healthier option with, without thinking of what I'd really like. And, I was fasting and I went, I opened my eating window. I had a martini. I ate the bread. I had salad and whatever entree I wanted. And I closed my window there and I thought I could do this for the rest of my life. It just felt so freeing because I wasn't obsessed. I got to enjoy the company, the food. And I feel like sometimes, often people have those kind of experiences where you're like, wow, that's, that can fit in without the guilt. And it's not daily. I mean, money aside, I can't afford to go out to eat every single night, but it just was an illustration of the freedom of wherever I'm at. I can participate joyfully and then move on. And that's what I love about fasting. And that's when I wanted to start sharing. So what, what gives you the, the guts to put yourself out there every day to share, especially what I eat in the days? Cause I know you're seen on a much larger scale and I know the kind of comments I get. So I can imagine what you see. Yeah. So a few things with that one, I have always, any time I've ever lost weight in the past, I have documented it through different mediums. So sometimes it was my fitness pal tracking every calorie every day. Sometimes it was in the Weight Watchers app a long time ago <laughs> when blogs were around, I wrote a blog and okay. every day I wrote my workouts. I personally like journaling, mm -hmm. like on a physical fitness, it keeps me accountable. I like the accountability aspect of it. So what I did different this time, because it's later and it's, um, YouTube's been around for a while, but I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to document my journey on Instagram. So I started just taking weekly progress photos, week one, week two, and I'd post them to Instagram. And then a friend of mine was like, um, he runs a jump rope YouTube channel. We were in the army together and he's like, you may want to look at YouTube. So then I looked at YouTube and I was like, oh yeah, YouTube would be a good place to document. So I put it out there to keep myself accountable is initially why I started, right? Like I want to have a journal mm -hmm. that I can look back and see progress and everything. And what it has turned into is I have developed an absolute passion around this idea of slow and steady, like ditching yo-yo diets, like even intermittent fasting. It's not a magic pill. Like it may not work for right. everybody. I encourage people to find what works for you. This just happens to work for me and works great for me. So what started as a way to keep myself accountable has turned into, you know, sharing this idea of slow and steady progress over perfection. Um, and then as far as negative comments and stuff like that, being in the army gave me a thick skin, like, man, we always yeah. ribbed each other. And I know, I, I know when somebody is asking a question because they want information, um, mm -hmm. versus when somebody is being mean, hurtful, spiteful. And in those cases, depending on what it is, I just ban them from the channel. Um, I still <laughs> see most of my comments. I'm now getting to the point where I can't see every comment anymore. There was a point right. where I could read every comment. And some of them I like to poke back at them. I, I don't know. I, 
I know that behind every comment is an actual person and I try to have empathy. Sometimes somebody leaves a, a, a nasty comment. I think, man, life's too short to be negative. Like I'm trying to be positive all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I had someone, and it blows me away when I think of this, he commented on my teeth. I have big front teeth, and I know that, but he said something, and I just replied to him, and I was like, oh, geez, thank you, I'm 35, and I never realized I had big teeth. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't think someone would actually read this. And I thought, how many people say mean things thinking they're just being funny and no one's going to see it? And it didn't hurt my feelings, because obviously I know I have big front teeth. I've lived with them since whenever, but I just don't understand. But I'm with you. Like, there's someone on the other side. It's very hard not to uh, clap back or whatever well, sometimes. No, but... I mean, no I, I love a good clap back every once in a while. That's the art. Like, I, I, I honestly, I, I know that I... I don't I try to keep it family appropriate. There's sometimes where I really want to let loose. I don't though. But I love a good I love a good clap back. Yeah, just just send me your secret thoughts so I can laugh with you. Um, <laughs> um but I I feel like there are so many people that need to see the message that perfection isn't required, that Big Macs can still fit in if that's gonna be a struggle of starting fasting is doing a perfect diet that it's not required. And that's why I think it's important that you put yourself out there. Me put myself out there is there are people that are looking to see it still attainable for them without, you know, the lean chicken broccoli meal only. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to move into the fast, the fast food portion where I ask you rapid fire, just laid back, silly questions. Are you ready? I am ready. So I, I did not look at these because I want to do oh, my good. best to give you like just off the cuff. <laughs> okay. So what's your favorite drink? Um, Diet Sunkist. I love Diet Sunkist. And that's, so I am a Diet dirty Sunkist. faster. I'm a mm -hmm. dirty faster. And I would say, again, 70, 30, 70% of the time I try to fast clean. 30% of the time, if I'm having something, it's a Diet Sunkist. And when they okay. go BOGO, I'm buying a, a heap of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your favorite food? I get this question all the time from my five and eight year olds because we ask a bunch <laughs> of questions. It's either, I would say Mexican food, like go out to a Mexican restaurant. I could eat that oh, yeah. forever. Me too. What's the Mexican scene like in Florida? It's pretty good. I, I, you know, a good, I think a good indication of a good Mexican restaurant is when you go there and the menu is like four pages long and there's like A, B, A through Z. And then it's like A, 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 B with 8 million <laughs> different combinations. Like, all right, this place is gonna be this place is gonna be all right. I you know I don't know if we have authentic up here, but I love Mexican restaurants too. They're my favorite because I I'm someone that I'll go and I'll get something different every single time, and I love the varied menu. What's the weirdest food combination that you love? I get a lot of stuff for but my uh, cheese and honey. I, I, that I is saw pretty it weird time, to me. <laughs> I saw it one time on like. I was watching charcuterie like videos and stuff like that. And every time there's charcuterie, there's like cheese, meat, and a little thing of honey. I was like, well, what's the honey for? And it's like, you try it on the cheese. It's like, it's pretty good. Now, sharp cheddar, like don't put it on American, but like sharp cheddar or goat okay. cheese. <laughs> honey and goat cheese is really good. Oh, it's that like good. sweet and salty combination. I started making um, from a YouTube short toast with cottage cheese, avocado, and hot honey. It's, it is really good. And that's the only time I've ever put like a cheese with a honey. So I get where you're going. But when I saw you with the, the Cabot white cheddar, I've seen it. I've never done that before. Yeah, <laughs> I have to sweet try because I do I love like honey. Um, does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes. I don't order it a lot, but I'm not against it. Yeah, I love it. What's a food that most people love that you dislike? On the very rare occasion, I like onions. I don't like onions in hardly anything, especially cooked onions. Like raw onions yeah. on a salad or a burger are okay, but like cooked sautéed onions, I am not a fan. Like a cheesesteak, like a Philly cheesesteak with onions in it, I would not enjoy that at all. I do not like cooked oh, onions. Oh, that's funny. That was actually one of the hardest parts for me. I did keto for a month just to test it. And I didn't realize that um, onions are high carb and in every diet, onions are like freebies. So I, that was the hardest thing. I eat onions all the time. I love onions. Oh, put onion on a pizza and it's like, oh, you've destroyed it. And then even if you pick them off, it's like, I can still taste it. See, and I thought we could be friends because if I got a one topping pizza, about 90% of the time, it's probably onion. So I don't know. I might have to scratch this whole podcast. Um, okay. So last question. If you, what would your last meal be? Your perfect last meal. 
French onion soup. Uh, no, French onion soup's okay. When I was a kid and still even now, I'm drinking the broth. I'm leaving the onions in there. I'll eat the cheese, <laughs> the bread, and the broth. I'll leave the onions. Um, perfect last meal. It was a toss-up when I said the Mexican and a food that I love is pizza. So I, I love pizza. So I didn't have some sort of really, really good pizza. And finished with key lime pie? Key lime pie or cheesecake, yes, 100%. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that ends the fast food round. And I just want to give you an opportunity. Is there anything that we didn't discuss that you'd like to share with someone that might be listening? No, I think, I think we talked about a lot of good stuff and I think just continue to share this idea of, you know, you don't have to be great to start. You got to start to be great. Like just, we overthink so many things. Like we have the rest of our lives to get healthy and if we just focused on getting a little bit healthier and picking up one habit this year, well, the next year we can yeah. pick up another habit. If we're trying to get healthy and live another 40 to 50 years, we can learn one thing a year. Like we don't have to do it all today. So just start. I love that. And it's sustainable that way. I love it. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's honestly been a very big, uh, exciting thing for me knowing this is coming. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you. No, it's great talking with you, Jackie. I love it.